Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have Bin Laden's Hard Drive. This is a documentary from National Geographic, uh, featuring Peter Bergen here. Uh, this is a man who, in 1997, actually sat down and interviewed uh, Osama Bin Laden uh, at a time when, yeah, he was a <sighs> radical revolutionary over in that part of the world, and uh, there was no telling what he was capable of. Certainly not at the scale of 9-11 uh, that we've discovered in 2001. Just four years after his time, there are pictures of him with, uh, with uh, bin Laden from that time. And he shows that right at the very beginning. Um, what he does throughout this documentary is talk to other people who have also uh, interviewed him and others who examine the contents of the hard drive that they acquired after SEAL Team 6 invaded his compound and killed him and a good number of his family at the time. Uh, this is in no way meant to uh, trivialize or uh, glorify or make light of uh, who Osama bin Laden truly was. He, while he presented himself as a humble, quiet, uh, doting father and grandfather in many ways. Uh, it's it's not lost on anybody. This is a man who, going against his very faith, his Muslim faith, he spilled innocent blood. But as most religious zealots do, they tend to find loopholes in order to justify their horrible things, in order to take uh, a philosophy that is of love or uh, peace, they go, well, but if you look at it this way, I'm justified in hating, hurting, and killing other people. No, it's not the way it works. And they go through this. Uh, it, I mean, yesterday when I looked at this, when it, when it was picked, uh, it was, you know, I kind of laughed because it was very different from what we had just watched. And I was like, I knew about some of the stuff that had already existed. Some of the memes that go around are the things that, did you know that they found this on his hard drive? Yeah, yes, there's lots of porn. Yes, there's Western cartoons and Japanese animation. Anime, yeah. Um, is it his? I mean, it's a computer shared by a lot of people in, in the home of many generations. Uh, but also, um, it was a computer that he, that belonged to someone else prior to him. So there's no telling who actually was entertained by all this. What he was entertained by was anything that talked about him. Uh, I, I, I'll, yeah, I'll leave, I'm not going to tell you too much more because it's something that you can, you should watch this disco to discover on your own. Um, but he, uh, he really was obsessed with how he was seen in the West and in documentaries and in interviews of other people who, you know, news programs. Uh, <laughs> whenever he wasn't on the screen, especially if there was a woman on the screen talking, he brought up a menu that covered up her face. Yeah. Uh, same thing with, uh, with the president. They would just cover up the face. Anybody who would say anything negative about him. He really was into his own propaganda, and he also shared that propaganda with his children and grandchildren, that whole indoctrination that uh, obviously was part of his his life, uh, just makes it all the more sad and a, sort of a terroristic thing to indoctrinate children into your really, really screwed up, uh, and that's saying it lightly, um, interpretation of your religion and your beliefs and your hatred for anything that isn't like the way you think the world should be. So, yeah, it has it has a lot of insights, a lot of things uh, that you wouldn't necessarily uh, look at. I, I was surprised at how a lot of people saw him as an individual as compared to the monster that we know him as within the media. Uh, and we don't have to go very far to build that opinion. We just have to look at 9-11, and it's, it's apparent. We, everybody attributes that to him. He attributes that to him. And what he was hoping to do 
after that was beat it, do something bigger. And thankfully, he never got that chance, thanks to SEAL Team 6. So uh, I, I recommend this if you're interested in uh, a little bit of history, a little bit of context. Uh, you, you see people translating uh, so much. I don't know if it was, he had gigabytes or terabytes worth of stuff on there. A lot of it was video. There's a lot of video footage filmed with a like a handy cam uh, by his son, apparently, of just the grounds they lived in. He came from a wealthy family, and he lived in a in a dirty, filthy compound uh, in the middle of nowhere in Pakistan for a while uh, when they found him, and uh, he was just surrounded by chickens and cows and dirt and small children who he was indoctrinating. So, great. Uh, he, he knew he was the most wanted man in the world, and he wasn't going to just let everybody know where he was. He didn't have internet. He didn't send email or anything else. He hid, and they had couriers moving stuff back and forth. It got so bad that even his bodyguards were like, we're done with this. We, we don't want to... We don't want to hang out anymore. <laughs> we don't, we, can we just move on? Can I get a recommendation and head out? Yeah, that's pretty much... It was a miserable life toward the end. Well-deserved, but, you know. I, I, I suggest that you, uh, you get a chance to look at this. It, it, somebody made a comment that this tries, they're trying to rehabilitate Bin Laden, like make him into a sympathetic figure. No. No, they just don't spend 45 minutes. Uh, I mean, again, this is from 2020. It's 44 minutes long. They don't spend 45 minutes saying, he's evil. We know that. He's a piece of crap. But uh, they try to see that the, the reason why they show him as a normal guy uh, shows that normal guy, religious zealots with the means to commit violent acts is something that is not attributed to just one religion or just one part of the world or just one type of guy. He wasn't shaking a spear and cackling maniacally. He wasn't twirling a mustache. He was a humble man capable of horrible things and wanted to do more. And uh, we don't need that, cr that crap. We don't need not on this planet. Nope. Take it to a different planet. Ming, the merciless. Not merciless, I don't know. I'm just saying, if you might find a little queasy about anybody saying anything nice about the man, but I think there's a lesson to be learned. The evil can be found anywhere. Let's pick tomorrow's episode. 270. Now, I'm hoping that we don't get another documentary, but I have no control over that. Uh, as you see, this is all randomly selected, um, and I watch whatever comes up. We've had documentaries, so thankfully they're all very different. They all came up in the last, oh my gosh, we got a not documentary. Um, I don't know what this is. I don't know how old this is. This feels like it's like an older, maybe Disney Channel movie, or maybe something even older than that. I don't know. It's a movie. We're going to be watching... The Curious Case of Dolphin Bay. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it feels like a Disney, either a Disney movie of the week from like the 70s uh, or the 60s, or a Disney Channel thing that has tweens doing extreme things and, and then solving mysteries. I don't know. The, the, say it again. The Curious Case of Dolphin Bay on the next Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.